Bitcoin down on the weekly, not looking pretty. ADA also down on the weekend. It's it's all in a downtrend. Crypto is in a downtrend right now, everybody. As usual, trying to figure out what is going on. And I my simple answer all the time, this is just what charts do. This is just what charts do. This is just what crypto does throughout these cycles. This move that is happening right now is the most commonplace move that could possibly be happening. And the concern was, not a concern, the question, were the Bitcoin spot ETFs just going to start an early bull market or something? That was the whole question. And it, it hasn't. The move that's happening right now, I want to break down continuously as we zoom in on the charts, what's happening on Bitcoin on the daily, what's happening on ADA in terms of structure on the daily. Hit the subscribe, please hit the like button, turn notifications on before we dive into the charts. And feel free to hit the timestamps if you want to go right to the charts and pricing. Before we dive into that, today was a really big day. Last week, I was covering the Coinbase SEC oral hearings like crazy. We had the same type of thing playing out today. Binance, SEC, face-off over regular regulators, crypto oversight. I'm not going to spend too much time on this, but they had oral arguments today. There's a couple things I just want to point out to you. Meta Lawman did a really nice sum up of, of the case of the hearing, what happened today. One thing that stood out, though, and then I'll get to the second thing. The judge seemed impressed with the reasoning in the Ripple case paraphrasing, she said, Ripple was a thorough, well thought through opinion. And here's the thing. That is important because throughout both of these cases, the Binance case with Judge Jackson and the Coinbase case with Judge Fila, throughout both of these cases, it's looking pretty promising in regards to what the judges are thinking in terms of secondary market sales of these of these cryptos, right? So I wanted to point that out. I think that says a lot. But the other thing I wanted to point out was this. What the SEC is doing right now throughout these cases. Here's Paul Graywall, right? He's retweeting a tweet from Scott Johnson over here. Let's read what Scott said. This is from the the oral hearing today in Binance versus Binance. The SEC said, the token itself represents the investment contract. The token represents the embodiment of an investment contract. That's what they said. Now, Paul Graywall, chief legal officer over at Coinbase, is taking a piece of the script from their oral arguments last week. Look what the SEC says. The token itself is not the security. So I just, I posted and I said, basically, between the two hearings, Coinbase and Binance, the SEC is saying that the token itself is not the security, rather the token itself is the security. And it, it absolutely doesn't make sense. They are just so confused in all of this, and it's because they have, first off, no right in terms of being the authority in crypto, but they're all over the place because they're, they don't have the law on their side. And I've been saying that a lot. This is kind of like when a liar gets caught between lies. <laughs> they're saying it's the token itself is not security in one case, and in the other case, they're saying it is a security. And then just ironically, today it got announced at SEC, it was a SIM swap that happened, as you remember, when the X account got hacked. It's because of a SIM swap, and I just said... SEC got SIM swap because it can't even comprehend how to secure a social media account, yet they want to be the ones who have authority over all of crypto. It's the way this whole thing is playing out. It's incredible to, to watch this play out. And we're all just, we're here waiting. We're here waiting to see what is going to happen uh, because obviously you and I involved in this crypto space, it is incredibly meaningful to, to the crypto industry, crypto space in general. So, Let's pivot to Bitcoin. I want to give you an update on the on the Binance SEC news and everything going on there. Let's let's pivot to Bitcoin charts and we'll hop over to ADA charts and we'll talk about what's going on. This is the Bitcoin move. Doesn't surprise me at all. Uh, as you know, yesterday's video, we were discussing the potential downtrend that, that was very much in play off of this rejection. I'm not going to go too much into it, but it was the swing high of the bull market to bear market low. Pulled right back into the 618 area, $48,000 resistance. And this is what we've seen in previous cycles. So we've been talking about just this general area of $30,000 to $34,000 on the weekly potential area for Bitcoin to consolidate back down to. Right now, Bitcoin is falling and people are kind of like, man, what is going on? Is it grayscale? Is it what they're selling? Is, you know, they're selling Bitcoin? What's, what's happening? And for me, that's fine to speculate amidst headlines, amidst what's, you know, currently taking place with events. However, it, it almost at the end of the day, it just doesn't matter. And this is why I use the charts to put aside the emotion and the speculativeness of it all and just watch the charts and wait for targets. 
Because at the, at the end of the day, the targets down here, which is the higher low Fibonacci that we talked about yesterday, 30 to 34,000, this green area, really nice target for, for Bitcoin. We saw it in previous cycles. What I wanted to talk about was something we discussed in yesterday's video. I'm not going to show a clip, but uh, we were discussing the potential move. You can see Bitcoin is at 41,600. Right now, Bitcoin's at 39,600. We're down 1,000. But what's most notable is the very fact that Bitcoin has broken below this trend line. There's only a little bit over an hour left of the, of the current daily candle that you see breaking through that upper trend line. And this is exactly what we were talking about yesterday. The, the picture-perfect scenario that I discussed was maybe Bitcoin sees support at that trend line and maybe just kind of forms this, this ascending triangle. And proves me wrong, right? And Bitcoin actually just starts trending back up and breaks 48,000. Because my video yesterday was about Bitcoin, I don't think is going to break 48,000 again until after the Bitcoin halving in April 2024. Now, in order for that to hold true, where we get this really nice setup of an ascending triangle, it would have been Bitcoin needing to really just hold above this, this upper trend line. This upper trend line is this rising wedge that, that we're still tracking because the target to the upside for that rising wedge is around 70,000. Now, Bitcoin falling back into the wedge, which I think is very normal as we're approaching kind of the end of the wedge, right? It's a huge, massive rising wedge, but it's normal for, for cryptos to fall back into, or even if it's, if it's falling out of, pull back into these patterns. And so in terms of identifying, well, how far into the pattern might it fall, we just take what we have on the weekly, which is around 34,000, right? Down to around 30,000. And we kind of have this area down here. Bitcoin could just gravitate down to this area. It might just hover above the 200. Maybe we don't touch the bottom trend line, but we need to fall to the 200 moving average around 35,000 or so until Bitcoin starts really seeing support. So that's what I'm tracking on Bitcoin. I would say most notable also that's happening right now is the very fact that you see this 20 day getting ready to fall below the 50. And the reason I want to bring that up is because when we get this move, the 20 falling below the 50, don't be surprised if we get a little bullish fake out in, in even the coming days. That is to say Bitcoin starts trending back up green, maybe even back above this upper trend line because it's going to want to test, I would say, this, these moving averages. There's a very good chance it wants to test, test these moving averages, um, the 20 below the 50. To give you an example, we can just go back here. When it was crossing the 20 below the 50, right there, there's the cross. You can see Bitcoin wants to test that entire area maybe before another leg down. And then same thing right here. Check this out. 20 below the 50 wants to test that entire area before going to the next leg down. So we might see Bitcoin test that area, right? So testing the area of the moving averages, pulling into Bitcoin before going to the next leg down. So this is just a journey that we're kind of a part of. <laughs> right now in the short term, right? These are short-term price moves when you really think about it in, in the bigger scheme of things zoomed out on a Bitcoin chart. A move to that area of 30, 34,000 is really not that big of a deal going into Bitcoin having scarcity getting taken up a notch. Institutional demand coming into play. 2024 could be a very, very bullish year, the kickstart of the parabolic bull run. So a little dip right now, exactly what we saw in previous cycles prior to the having. So something I'm anticipating Cardano, we know what's going on with ADA. We talked about this in yesterday's video. Also very similar areas, right? The 50-week the moving average, right around 35 cents. The 20-week moving average, around 40 cents. We did a video yesterday. Yesterday, or Actually, this wasn't yesterday. This was from three days ago. This was about a speculative setup. And this is what I'm watching still on ADA. And it's not to say I'm looking out for that ascending triangle because at this point, the one I was actually painting in that picture, not really going to play out, right? Because we were kind of just right there kind of deal. That's not playing out. It doesn't mean an ascending triangle won't be the structure that we get, but I'm still in this, this phase for me as we wait for ADA to consolidate. And to give you an idea, going back to the weekly, again, I just want to say the 20-week moving average, 40 cents or so. The 50-week moving average, 36 cents. So 40 and 36, you go to the daily. We, we just put this on the chart. If I can get my brush. So 40 cents and 36 cents, right? On the weekly, that's what we're looking at for those moving averages. And this is what it looks like on the daily. This general area of support for ADA to fall to, we're looking at potential 25% dip to those areas. Notice it's just above this upper trend line of this 
this um, descending triangle that Ada fell, fell or broke out of back here in November. And this would be just a, a throwback. And again, on the macro, these are normal. So Ada is kind of doing a very typical move and actually extremely typical. If we even look at the last cycle, we've been likening this move to the move into Shelly hard fork back here. And you can just see Ada just absolutely tanked. You can see from that swing high to swing low, Ada fell 56%. And imagine how bearish that must have felt all the way down to that 200 day moving average area. And then that was the last dip. That was the last dip. Seven cents or so before the parabolic bull run for ADA. We could just be in a very similar move and just look at that 20 day crossing below the 50, ADA testing those moving averages like we just talked about for Bitcoin, falling to that next leg down, and then check it out. We go to the charts today and we're just getting a very similar setup. The 20 falling below the 50. It's a commonplace move. It is what it is. All we can do is sit here, we wait for structure, and we continue to monitor the situation. You know, if anything out of the ordinary from a bearish perspective comes into play, then we're going to have to pay attention to that. But right now, I get that price falling is bearish. Just that's the general consensus. And I agree with that, right? Price going down is bearish. Price going up is bullish. But what I'm saying on the macro, because I'm a macro-minded investor, it's not bearish for cryptos to retrace in this way. It's just simply normal. It's what they do. I've been doing these videos for over six years, and it's just something... You just have to get used to it if you're going to be in these markets. So we can't just keep being bullish nonstop to all-time highs. There's got to be big pullbacks along the way. We have to learn to be grateful for them. So continuing to watch structure for ADA right now. Again, it could look something, maybe, maybe ADA, all of a sudden, crypto bounces tonight, starts going up, right? Then we can start monitoring, all right, maybe that's our piece of, that's our lower trend line that's going to be put into play. But right now, we need some consolidation. We go to the weekly. We just need ADA to bottom out somewhere, to form some type of swing low. And that's what it's trying to form right now. To give you an idea, you see all of this structure back here as ADA is bottoming. You can kind of see the RSI bottoming out as well, consolidating. Kind of what we're looking at, at right here for, for ADA. We're waiting for that story to play out. Just takes a little bit of time on these daily charts before we get that, that pivot point where we can start drawing some type of trend line. And maybe the trend line is going to be down here. Maybe it's going to be a trend line down here that starts forming. I don't know. But that's what I'm watching for ADA. All the while, I will just continue to say this move, in my opinion, because that's all it is. I'm just tracking my crypto journey here, everybody. I just think this is a normal move. And we'll continue to, to monitor and track ADA charts, Bitcoin charts, and, and altcoins in general in these, in these areas. So hit the subscribe for me if you're not a subscriber. Turn the notifications on for crypto news, Bitcoin charts, altcoin charts, all that good stuff. I appreciate each and every one of you. I will see you in the next video. God bless.